What's up everybody, Bruno here. And you know, it's that time of year again where the next season is coming up. And there's a lot of people right now in the process that are in the finals or may even already been cast to be on the show and their shoe-ins to be on the show. Um, you know, I wish when I went on the show the first time there were some videos like this maybe help me out. Uh, just for little things to look at, look for in the house. Uh, maybe some things to do, do's and don'ts uh, while you're in the house. Little uh, tells that people, that you can find out if they're lying or not. Uh, little things like that. Nothing too crazy. Don't take this for gospel. Again, every season is very different. The players in the house play very different every single year uh, these are just little things that kind of helped me uh, along the way and things I noticed again the second time I played that some players were making uh, the same gestures and the same mistakes that other players were making uh, the first season that that let me kind of like catch on to their game um, and things like that so uh, one of the key things I would say is always pay attention to where everybody is at any time uh, of any day at the house so, um, you know, if there's, you know, four people hanging out in a bedroom, uh, how long are they there for? Which four people? Is it the same four people hanging out all the time? Um, little things like that. Uh, they're very, very, very telling. What people do you never really see together a lot? Um, you know, is someone going into the pantry? How long are they in the pantry for? Uh, if they're in there for five minutes, maybe they are getting food. If they're in there for 45 minutes, it's hard to believe that they're in there to go get a sandwich or a banana because it really doesn't take 45 minutes to get a, um, a jar of milk or peanut butter or whatever. So little things like that is just a way to kind of figure out what people are up to at what time in the house. Another thing I want to tell you guys to pay attention to, okay? So awkward moments do come in the house, okay? So say you're in a room talking to somebody, two or three people that you're working with, and you're talking, and you're talking game, and talking strategy, and what you want to do, and all of a sudden somebody walks in the door. The biggest mistake that people make, and please do not make this mistake, is they go silent. They go silent. So they'll be talking and talking, or you'll hear laughing and everything. All of a sudden you walk in the door, dead silent crickets and it's just everyone just kind of looks around like yeah that's pretty obvious that you're either talking about them or you're they're plotting something whatever not a good look so my advice to you guys okay before you start talking come up with something say hey if somebody walks in that door i'm gonna start talking about hockey or i'm gonna start talking about your jewelry or i'm gonna start talking about the competition whatever you want to talk about fishing i don't care what it is you want to talk about apples i don't care come up with something so before you sit down or you sit down in that room and you say guys okay whatever da, 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 da. if someone walks in that door i'm gonna say so where did you get those earrings or whatever i don't care what you say just come up with something that has to be fast the second that door opens boom you hit that line right away right away and just kind of go with it come up with an answer right away and just start talking about the earrings or the banana or whatever the hell you want to talk about i don't care but switch that conversation right away so that person comes maybe even sits down with you and feels welcome doesn't feel threatened and it's like nothing was going on Please keep that in mind because it happens so many times where someone comes in a room to bust up a conversation and it's pure silence, pure awkwardness, and it kind of, you know, gives people an idea, okay, they don't want me to hear what they were talking about. So they're obviously, uh, why don't you want to tell me what you're talking about? Don't you trust me? Kind of thing. So that is huge. I really hope people put that into consideration. You don't have to do that. Just come up with something else. Whatever it is, I don't care. But do not, do not, do not go dead silent because it is not a good look uh, for all of you guys involved. Another thing would be, I would say, uh, the cameras. This is something that a lot of people do not pick up on, and I picked up on it more the second time. The first time I played, I really didn't pick up on this very much, uh, but the second time, I definitely, definitely did. Pay attention to the cameras. The cameras will tell you a lot more than you think. If you're in a conversation with somebody in a room, and all of a sudden a camera turns to the door, you know that somebody could be coming to the door. Maybe somebody that you're talking about, that maybe they want to get that reaction uh, of them coming in and busting you or something along those lines pay attention to the cameras they're very 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 telling um perfect example when uh on season five when kevin and i were going up for nomination i knew we were being nominated and i told kevin because just the way the cameras were facing us um it was very obvious that we were the ones going on the block uh because you know they obviously want to they have to get the footage of us being nominated our reaction us getting up the cameras turned right to us faced us dead on it was very, very obvious. So cameras play a huge, huge, huge part in the game. 
uh, more than people know, and, and uh, it definitely is a big, big factor uh, to get some information. Another thing too is, you know, a lot of people don't think about it, but these this isn't really a house. It's a, it's a it's a makeshift house built in a studio. The walls are very very thin. If you're in a room. Don't think you're safe. Don't think people uh, can't hear what you're saying. Um, I know the house is going to be new this year, uh, so I don't know if it's going to be built differently or the layout, whatever, is going to be completely different. But I'll tell you, when people were hanging out in the washroom, the bathroom, whatever you want to call it, and I was sitting in my bedroom, I could actually hear what people were saying just through the wall. Just leaning on the on the back of my bed, just my back against the wall, just leaning there. And I could hear perfectly well what people were talking about. And it gives a lot of information. And people think they're whispering and they're talking really low. But in reality, I could hear clearly what they were saying. And uh, please pay attention to that. That's something very, very key. Uh, just the tone of your voice. Uh, it travels a lot more than you think in that house. Um, another thing, the diary room, pay attention to the diary room. The diary room gives away a lot more than people realize. Why are they asking you these kind of questions? Why are they asking you what your relationship with this person is? Or do you trust this person or whatever it is? Um, do you trust your alliance? Whatever it is, whatever kind of questions they ask, cause they have no idea. They're not purposely trying to give you information or purposely trying to blow up anybody's game. They're not doing that. They're just trying to do their job and they have to ask these questions to get these answers. So, you know, pay attention to these questions because it's part of the storyline. They have to get the answer out of you. They need to know your opinion on the matter. So why are they asking you about these certain players and do you trust them or not and this and that? Pay attention. You know, um, again, don't take it for gospel if they're asking you, oh, do you really trust the person you're working with? Maybe you can trust them and maybe they're just trying to get you to open up about it a bit. But pay attention if they're asking you certain things, the way they ask it, that is huge. The diary room will give you more than you expect for sure. Um, other things too, like I said, I've met cameras, the diary rooms, uh, what else did I go with? Where people are at all times. Try to stay central. I mean, um, like for me, I'd like to be in the family room, the main room, because I could see upstairs uh, who was in the blue bedroom, who was in the pink bedroom, who was in the HOH room, uh, just things like that. You could see which rooms people are switching to uh, throughout the day, who's in the kitchen, who's in the backyard, etc, etc. It was a central area and you could really see, and you're not really hiding from anybody, you're just sitting out in the open. So everyone kind of looks downstairs and says, oh, you know, Bruno's just sitting on the couch doing nothing. But in reality, I'm actually gaining more information by being by myself sitting on the couch than people are uh, exchanging in the rooms because I'm seeing who's bonding and who's con uh, connecting and just uh, little things like that. Now let's get into competitions a little bit. And the work for my game was I always wanted to make sure that if I was throwing a competition, that I'd throw it to somebody that had a similar target or a target in mind that obviously benefited my game. Now, throwing competitions is risky. It really is because anything can happen. The game really does change. Uh, very very often so you know throwing it to somebody and them telling you hey this is my target that can actually change by the time nominations come up so you really have to make sure that their target or your target the person you want to go is really their target so uh, my plan was I always wanted to throw it to the right people or if I could obviously a lot of it it's not in your control, but if it came to that point where, okay, there's these many people left, there's three or four people left, and I'm kind of okay if, if any of these people win, then okay, I can throw it because their targets will benefit my game or it won't hurt my game in any ways. It'll keep it kind of neutral or whatever because I always wanted to be able to play in a week that I needed to. So I would throw the competitions in the weeks that I figured, okay, I'm okay this week, but next week I might have to play for my life. Let's see how this week plays out and I'll be able to play and hopefully win the next week. So as long as I kind of felt safe, um, I didn't really have to win. And uh, as long as there was somebody winning that I was kind of okay with, or that maybe we could kind of manipulate a little bit into putting up someone that um, would benefit my game, then I was okay with that and I'd throw that. But some people like to go out and just win the competitions and that's okay too. There's no set strategy. Anybody that tells you this is how you have to play Big Brother, don't listen to it. There is no way to play Big Brother. There's been so many different winners from, you know, competition players to social players to strategic players to floaters to whatever. You name it. There's no such thing as this is how you play Big Brother. Every season is completely different. I will tell you firsthand from season three to season five was night and day. Completely different game. Uh, all together the characters the people everything is just completely different 
I'll use somebody like uh, Dr. Will or Dan or Derek or whatever, Evil Dick, you name them. You put any of those people in different seasons on their first play, and I bet you these people would not play the same. They'd have to play completely different. If you put, say, uh, let's say a Janelle in Derek's season, Derek wouldn't be able to do the things he did with someone like Janelle in the house. And whatever, that's just an example, or Derek and De whatever. Okay, I'm just saying... You, there's no such thing as a set strategy. You have to adapt. The game is about adapting. Every week is different. Uh, I can use season five as a perfect example. Uh, I was working very closely with Dylan and Emily uh, for, it was like 35 days. And we were tight. We were close. We were helping each other. I was helping them study for competitions. Um, just, we were tight. We were friends. All it took was one bad week. And they turned on me. They turned on me and, and Kevin and the people, everybody. They just, they, they totally flipped. And they went on with the other side, which these people were literally gunning for them straight for 35 days. They nominated them twice. On backwards week, they tried to get them nominated. Um, on the slop cookies, they gave them all their slop cookies, etc., etc. Every chance they had to take a shot at them, uh, the other side of the house to Dylan and Emily, they did. But yet, it took one, one day, one bad week... And they just flipped on us and they went right to that side and they were coming after us. And it just, that's the way it is. The game flips that fast. Now I want to get into something else which is pretty big that people don't realize as well. Sleeping arrangements. Guys, this is key. This is an open door to putting you in a room with people that you can talk to freely. You're hanging out in your room. Oh, I'm just going to go to my room. It's your room. So there's a reason for you to be in there with that person because you share a room together. If you're going to go get changed or you're going to sleep, whatever. Sleeping, picking your bedroom is key because those are the people you're probably going to get close to the most. Um, see, that's one thing I didn't know about season five. On season three, we shared one big bedroom. There were 16 of us in one bedroom. So there was none of that. But in season five, so when I went into season five, there was two bedrooms. I figured, okay, I don't care what room I sleep in. I'll sleep in this bed, this room, whatever. But it was a divide. The pink room all worked together. The blue room kind of worked together, whatever. But it was a divide. It was very clear. Uh, so Pay attention to that because at night is when everyone's sleeping. That's when you have a chance to talk to people. Everyone's asleep. They're they're sleeping. They can't hear you talk anymore. You can disappear, do whatever you want to do. Um, that is very key. So also pick a good partner uh, to be in your bed because that's the person you're going to talk to late at night. Very, very key. So bedrooms are key. Uh, the person you share a bed with is key. And um, yeah, it, it like I said, on season five, it definitely divided the house. I don't know if that's a normal thing or not, because on season three, it, like I said, we were all in one bedroom. So that's about beds uh, and sleeping arrangements. Make the right choice, because it's a crucial one. So when you run in that house, don't just throw your bag on the first bed. Um, definitely think about it before you do. All right, now I want to get back into the diary room again. Not only pay attention to the questions that they're asking you, but pay attention to how often they're calling certain people in. Um, usually there's one person, one or two people narrating the show. So if this person's getting called in the diary room a lot, there's a good reason. Maybe they're a big part of what's going on. Maybe they're running the string, pulling the strings, running the show, whatever it is. They're, they need someone to narrate the show. So pay attention to who gets called in, how often. Um, also pay attention to who's not getting called in. A lot of times people that aren't really uh, doing anything in the show that week, they're not really in danger. They have no power that week. There's no real reason to get them in the diary room because uh, they, don't, they don't really call them in very often. There's sometimes people go a whole week without ever going in the diary room. It just happens where someone else might get called in three, four times a day. It's just the way it is. Pay attention to that. They call it over the speaker. Bruno, Kevin, whoever, whoever, please come down to the diary room. You can hear it throughout the, usually, well, not really the whole house. If someone's in a bedroom, they'll stay in that room. But pay attention to who goes in and out. And um, it can be very telling. If, say, uh, someone's HOH, and you'll usually see the same few people get called in that week. The HOH gets called in. Uh, usually the people that are in danger, the people they nominated or they're going to nominate, um, the veto winner is another one that gets called in. Uh, they got to do that kind of, um, diary room session, uh, things like that. If someone's, um, 
it could be a back door they could get called in too so if you're not getting called in it's not necessarily a bad thing it could be a good thing because you're not really involved that week which isn't bad that means you're not involved in the drama you're not involved uh you're not in danger so there's not a possibility of going up the block things like that it's not a bad thing but definitely pay attention uh that's another thing that's very telling in the house now i want to get into something that to some people might be very obvious to other people they can be very oblivious okay so whenever they show you a clip in the house, whatever it is, if it's a clip of something or you hear a siren or something, okay, it's there for a reason. They're not just going to put a clip on the TV that you watch it and you just go, okay, that was a cool clip and I'm just going to go on my day. No, it doesn't work that way. Everything that's in that house is there for a reason. So if they play a clip, pay attention, memorize it. It's part of the next challenge. Uh, if they give you a script, not now don't take this the wrong way there is no scripts in the house but we had a competition on season five where we had to play um uh we were pretending we were part of a soap opera so we had lines it was part of the challenge we had to play out a play uh and then the questions to the next challenge was like did uh, i think one of them was did cassandra throw wine in dylan's face three times or four times things like that so um pay attention to everything everything in that house is for if you hear a buzzer go off there's probably something being hidden, something was hidden, something was found. It could be part of a competition. How many times did it buzz? Whatever it is, pay attention to everything. Everything, everything. Um, it's a controlled environment. They want you to hear that sound, you're going to hear that sound. If they don't want to hear the sound, trust me, you're not going to hear the sound. So pay attention to everything. Another key thing, count everything. You have nothing in there to do. You have everything. You have time. All you have is time, man. You have time, time, time. Count everything. You know, how many circles are there above the pool? How many mirrors are in the house? Uh, whatever. How many chairs are in the kitchen? Anything. It doesn't matter. Count, man. You have nothing better to do. You literally sit on that couch 10 hours a day. Uh, count things, you know. Uh, figure everything out and memorize. One thing I will tell you. People make a mistake. And they did it on season 3. And they did it again on season 5. And I know it sounds crazy, okay. But memorize your days. You have nothing better to do. Day one, okay? And everything, everything. If it's like a, a luxury challenge, if it's a veto challenge, a ceremony, whatever it is, you pay attention, okay? So it was like day 50 and people were starting to learn the days. How do you do that at day 50? It doesn't work that way. Day one, when you're going to bed, you're laying in bed and you run the day through your head. Okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened today, okay? We had a veto ceremony or this person won the veto. These six people played in the veto, um this person won roughly i think it was around this this long things like that or how many balls were thrown you think roughly whatever the competition is think of the competition and dissect it because these questions do come up you don't know which competition it's going to be but it will come up i promise you so day two do the same thing start from day one relive day one then relive day two go to bed Day three, do, rinse and repeat. Day one, day two, day three. And I'm not saying do this right before bed. I'm saying do this all the time. You should always be running the game through your head, the days, the competitions, how long you think they were, whatever it is, they should be running through your mind at all times. So by the time you get to day 40, day one, two to 10 to 20 to 30 is all burned into your brain that if this question comes up in a competition, you can instantly answer it. And if it's a timed one or whatever, you have it locked in. So it's very, very, very important. I know some people might think, oh man, that's obvious, but trust me, a lot of people do not do it. It happened both times I played half the house didn't have the days memorized. I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. So please memorize the days as I promise you, it will help you win the game in the end. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's some tips. I hope it helps. Listen, um, don't take it for gospel. This is just a little bit of advice I'm giving you. Uh, take some, leave some for all you want. Even if you just take a little bit out of this, uh, you know, uh, hopefully it helps. Just listen, if you're going in the house this year, I just want you to know, leave it all on the table. Don't walk away saying, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. You know, we all have mistakes. I have mistakes from both times. And just seriously, leave it all on the table. These people are not your friends. You're there to do a job. Do the job. Uh, don't give your game up for anybody. I hate seeing that when, you know, you get in a showmance or whatever, best buddies, and they're like, you know, I'm going to go home for you. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Because once you walk out that door, you're done. Um, leave it all on the table. And uh, just please... Um, 
I just wish you guys just one thing I can tell you is just enjoy the experience while you're in there because there are down times in there and there are going to be hard times in there. There's going to be emotional times in there. And, uh, you know, it is tough and you don't hear from, you know, people you love and you care about and the, and the support system and your family and stuff. It is tough in there. But I promise you, once you leave, you can't wait to get back in that house. So as hard as it is at any time in that house, don't give up. Just think of all the people that, you know, want to be in that house and just think of, you know, how, how happy you were to finally get accepted to be in this house and to be able to play the game. Don't give up. Uh, I hate seeing that and it just, it crushes my heart because I know how much it hurts people when, you know, they quit or whatever happens and I know uh, how much it affects them after. So, um, please just go in there, give it your all. Uh, well, I'll be watching. I can't wait to talk to you guys when it's all said and done and I'll be picking your brain in Niagara. We all go to Niagara. Uh, Niagara Falls uh, for after finale. We're gonna have a good time, and uh, just like I said, good luck. We'll be watching. I'll be cheering for you guys, and uh, just go kill it, man. Let's bring a good show. All right, take it easy, guys. Good luck.